Good afternoon. We're back with another Marvel Snap video, and today will be a tier list of the Pool 2 cards. I will talk about their place in the meta currently, the place in the meta in Pool 2, and I'll give my recommendations for which decks are best to climb with in Pool 2 for players who are currently in Pool 2 and have not yet entered Pool 3. If you are in Pool 2 and your goal is eventually to get to Infinite, I do recommend doing so before entering Pool 3, as it will never be easier to get to Infinite than it is right now while you have not yet entered Pool 3. Once you enter Pool 3 and are in early Pool 3, it will be some time most likely before you're able to get to Infinite, because when you enter into Pool 3, you're kind of thrown to the wolves and you start facing decks that have nearly complete collections, start facing players who have nearly complete collections. Not so much a problem when you're in Pool 2. The matchmaking is much, much better when you are in Pool 2 before entering Pool 3. So if you do have the goal of getting to Infinite, I do recommend doing so for the first time while you are in Pool 2 before entering Pool 3. Pool 3 beginning at collection level 475. So let's get started talking about the cards. We'll just go in alphabetical order. First up will be Agent 13, a one cost two power card on reveal. Add a random card to your hand, most commonly seen in the Dino archetype, as it adds a card for Dino and gives you two power on the board. It's a solid A tier card in that deck. It still sees play. In Pool 3 Dino decks, Dino is still a pretty common archetype, though it is typically mixed with Pool 3 cards, and Dino is the strongest archetype, in my opinion, in Pool 2. And therefore, Agent 13 deserves a spot as a solid A tier card in that deck. Now, outside of the Dino deck, it's a C or a D tier card. I wouldn't bother with it. She's only really good in her deck, which is Dino decks at the moment. Bucky Barnes, an S tier card, extremely good card, 2-1, when this is destroyed create the Winter Soldier in its place and the Winter Soldier is a 2-6. This card is in every destruction deck that I've ever seen, until the end of time most likely, <laughs> or at least until Power Creep takes it out of the meta, but for a long time. Bucky Barnes is going to be in every destruction deck, and destruction decks, well, the Death Wave deck in Pool 3 is currently maybe a Tier 3 deck. However, in Pool 2, it's also not that good. It's maybe a, a C tier deck, B, B minus C plus tier deck. I would not necessarily recommend I would not recommend running a destruction deck in pool 2 up to infinite that will likely be quite a challenge however you are going to see bucky barnes a lot when you enter into pool 3 and the destruction decks a variety of decks run a variety of destruction type decks run bucky barnes not just the deck death wave deck because the bucky barnes carnage play is such a good tempo play Provide or Bucky Barnes Death Way or uh, Deathlock is a very good tempo play. Provides you with a six power card, a five power card, or a four power card in the case of Carnage for four cost. That is exceptional. So you see a wide variety of decks running that. However, I don't recommend it in Pool Two. It's a B minus C plus tier deck in Pool Two because you don't have death yet in pool 3 and that really enables the deck and you don't have wave to go with death she hulk so I wouldn't bother with that with destruction decks in pool 2 nonetheless Bucky Barnes is an S tier card next up we have cloak cloak is a movement deck card Next turn, both players can move cards to this location. It's a 2-4. Four. 4 power for 2 cost is pretty good. In the movement deck, this card is essential. A solid A tier card. 
and the movement deck never really comes into its own in pool three. However, in pool two, it's very good. I would have it ranked as the third best deck, though it is very complicated to learn and to play. But it's very good in pool two, and it never again will see the same status in pool three, unfortunately. It reaches its peak in pool two, and declines after that in pool three, and it could be that in the future we get more cards that make the movement deck better. As of right now, February 2nd, 2023, movement decks in pool three are terrible. However, it's a good option in pool two. It's a, a more difficult option than ongoing or dino, but it is a lot of fun to play. And so the movement deck in pool three it's quite good, and Cloak is a solid A tier card for that reason. In Pool 3, I would downgrade Cloak to a C or a D tier card. Probably a C tier card in Pool 3. But in Pool 2, it's quite good, and I can recommend using Movement to get to Infinite. If you like a challenge, you like thinking a lot when you play, it takes a long time to get to Infinite, about 100 hours. I would estimate for the first time, whether you're in Pool 2 or Pool 3, and so playing a fun deck can help break that up, though it is hard to play the deck optimally. I didn't unlock the Pool 2 movement cards until very late in Pool 2, so I didn't get in much playtime with movement when I was in Pool 2. But it is a good deck. Not an elite deck. I would reserve that status for the Dino deck and the ongoing deck, but it's a good deck. Next up we have Ebony Maw, a solid A tier card in Pool 3. In Pool 2 you see it sometimes, you see players running it sometimes in ongoing decks. I didn't really like it in mine. It's got a lot of uses. It, it gains more uses in Pool 3 where it's run in zero decks sometimes. I've even seen it used with Viper. It's a solid card. The version on the right is inaccurate. It's been buffed to a 1-7. In pool, in pool 2 though I wouldn't give this a second look. It appears good with its 7 power for 1 cost, but you can't play this after turn 3. And you can't play cards here. In pool two, my perception of this card is that it loses you more lanes than it wins. But it does have its uses in pool three, primarily in decks that can either add power to the lane later through Claw, Doctor Doom, something like that, or in decks that silence the ability. But it's always an ability that has to be worked around. And the, op and the options for working around that ability in Pool 2 are more limited than they are in Pool 3, which is why I don't recommend this card in Pool 2. And so for Pool 2 alone, this would be a, a C-tier card for me. Bucky Barnes would be also a B or a C-tier card in Pool 2. But once they come into their own in Pool 3, they get elevated in tier. Next up we have Iceman. Iceman is an S tier card. He's an S tier card in Pool 2. He's an S tier card in Pool 3. I fully expect this card to get nerfed at some point. But for now he is extremely common. He is unequivocally the best one drop, at least the best plug and play one drop in the game. The most versatile one drop in the game. He could go in virtually any deck and make that deck better. Give a random card in your opponent's hand plus one cost that throws off the mana curve or the energy curve for a lot of decks. I've seen games where you play Iceman and it hits the wrong card or the right card for you, the wrong card for your opponent, and they immediately concede. Now, it's not going to win you four or eight cubes, but he does ruin game plans. He is... I would rate his ability as worth... 2 power, so it's basically a 1 cost 4 power card that requires nothing of you to make it work. 
you just play it and it does what it needs to doesn't require any card combos or anything like that it's just a good card and it's a good card in pool two and it remains a good card in pool three that you will see so much that eventually you'll wish never to see this card again next up we have jubilee four cost one power on reveal add a card from your deck to this location this is a very solid a tier card possibly even s tier you see it in a variety of different decks most commonly I would say the Zabu Infinite deck which tries to use Jubilee or Ghost Rider to put Infinite on the board without needing to skip a turn in order to play it. Now in Pool 2 it is probably a B or a C tier card. You don't see it as much and the reason is because it really needs other cards into the deck in the deck to come into its own cards like Lockjaw cards like Ghost Rider, maybe even Mr. Negative. The decks which are top tier in Pool 2 tend to be simpler. The Dino deck and the Spectrum ongoing deck are relatively simple decks, not requiring any complex card combos. And the reason for that is that there aren't really any good complex card combos in Pool 2. And so, just straight up power decks win and Jubilee is not a straight up power deck, not a straight up power card. It's a card that combos, it really needs a deck around it to be good. However, in pool three, it's a solid A tier card. In pool two, I downgrade it to probably a C tier card, along with Ebony Ma and Bucky Barnes. But this is a card you're gonna see all the time in pool three. Next up we've got Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin's a very solid A tier card. Maybe a B tier card. It's a five cost negative eight power card on reveal your opponent gains control of this. So when you can swap it to your opponent's side of the table, you can bump up the power, in my opinion, to about a five negative 10. I would give it credit for an additional two power for taking up one of the opponent's card slots. It can even be better than that if you take up the fourth card slot and your opponent can no longer play any cards to the location. But it's worse in situations where you can't use on reveal effects because Cosmo is occupying the lane or because the location doesn't allow you to lose, use nowhere, uh, use on reveal effects like the location nowhere. And it can be bad if your opponent is able to eat it with Carnage or play Odin there to send it back to you. And Odin is a card that you'll see more in Pool 2 than you will in Pool 3. The Odin on Reveal deck is probably the third best deck in Pool 2. So you see it more commonly than you see it in Pool 3. And if you play Hobgoblin on 5 and your opponent plays Odin on 6 and sends the Hobgoblin back to you, then you're going to lose. In Pool 5, it sees play in Disruption decks. It sees play from time to time in a Lockjaw, like the one that I was playing in my videos most recently. It's a good card. In Pool 2, I downgrade it to a C card because of the prevalence of Odin. But in Pool 3, it's, it's a B tier card. It's, it's solid. You can do some neat things with it. It's, but it's nothing uh, exceptional or elite. It doesn't unlock any new archetypes. It's certainly not going to see every see play in every deck. Next up, we've got Killmonger. Killmonger is an S tier card because of the prevalence of Zoo in Pool Two. Killmonger wipes out Zoo. Killmonger gives you eight cube wins in Pool Two. He falls off a bit in Pool 3 down to an A or a B tier card, though he still sees play a lot in Silver Surfer decks. But in Pool 2, this is this card is one of the kings of the game. I would put him in almost every Pool 2 deck. Now, Zoo is everywhere in Pool 1. It does fall off a bit in Pool 2 because of Killmonger, though you still see it a lot 
and for that reason Killmonger is very very good in pool 2, an exceptional card that could go in almost any deck because he destroys you so thoroughly and gives you 8 cubes so often when he does so. Falls off a little in Pool 3, because Zoo is not as popular in Pool 3. In fact, I don't recall the last time I saw it. But in Pool 2, this card is very, very good. Next up, we've got Leech. 5 cost, 3 power. On reveal, remove the abilities from all cards in your opponent's hand. It seems better than it is. This is a B-tier card for me, and the reason is because... Yes, he wins you games, particularly against certain decks, but the games he wins you will always be for one or two cubes and never for four or eight cubes. And so if you make a, a deck that's based around getting Leech on the table, you will find yourself in a long, hard grind to get to infinite because he just doesn't win games for four or eight cubes. Because your opponent has the opportunity to see that his hand is now useless, his combo that he's been setting up is now useless, and he will be annoyed, but he will also retreat, and he will not give you any more than one or two cubes. So I don't recommend him for grinding up to infinite. The grind to infinite is already 100 hours when you're getting four or eight cube wins fairly regularly. You don't need to make it longer by playing Leech. Leech is a card that's going to have a place in tournament meta, where the long run doesn't matter as much, I think more so than he does in the ranked ladder. He's a good card. He just, by his nature, the wins he gets are not big wins. And when time is a factor, as it is for most players, it's important to play a deck that has at least the potential for big wins in order to get to high ranks in a fairly timely manner. And Leech is not going to help much with that, so I would not play decks with Leech in Pool 2. I don't really like him in Pool 3. I've tried him. I just find that he makes the opponent retreat too much when I'd rather they stick around thinking they can win and give me more cubes later. Next up we have Morbius, another solid A tier card in the discard deck. 2 cost, 0 power, plus 2 power for each time you discarded a card this game. Now, the discard deck is not very good in Pool 2. It's like a C or a D tier deck, but it really comes into its own in Pool 3. So in Pool 2 alone you can drop Morbius down to a C or a D tier card. Not worth much. But in Pool 3, this is a very good card. This becomes a very good card. There just aren't enough discard effects in Pool 2, and all the really good discard cards are unlocked in Pool 3. Next up we have Sabretooth. Now most of the cards in Pool 2 are pretty good, or at least have a deck in which they are pretty good. Sabretooth does not. This card is pretty bad. When this is destroyed, return it to your hand. It costs zero. It's three cost, four power. There's really not much use for this card. It's not played much in destruction decks in pool three. In pool two, it probably is just because of lack of options, but the destruction deck in pool two is not very good. Uh, this is a card that's going to stay in the collection most of the time. 4 power for 3 cost is not very good, and the ability does not make up for that. Next up we have Sandman. So this one may be a bit controversial. I, I have this as a C tier card. There are decks that are trying to make Sandman work in Pool 3 ramp decks. And that's because combo decks are prevalent right now with Zabu or Silver Surfer. And Sandman in theory counters those. However, it's a big tempo hit, and Sandman, in my view, suffers from the same problem as Leech, which is that when it works, it'll get you one or two cubes and not four or eight cubes, because you play it on turn four, and even if you snap before you play it, or if you Psylocke it out, if you're playing a pool three deck, you snap, you play it, and then your opponent sees that his deck is not going to work and retreats. 
and you win two cubes. He's not with a Silver Surfer or a Zabu deck, which Sandman hard counters. The opponent's not going to continue to try to win against that, usually. Almost all the time, they're just going to be like, oh, okay, he countered my deck, so he can have the one or two cubes, and that will make your infinite climb a grind. We don't want cards, generally, that make the opponent run away early. You want cards that make your opponent think he's winning, only for him to lose at the end, because then you get four or eight cubes. And you don't need that to happen every time for a card to be good, but if it happens regularly, then it's exceptional. I take the example of Killmonger. With a zoo deck, the opponent thinks he's doing very well. He's got all his one cards out. He's rolling along, and then suddenly at the end, all his one cards one cost cards die, and he loses. That is why Killmonger is an exceptional card. Sandman does not have that potential. So I don't think this card is much of anything. In pool two, you could downgrade it to an F, in all honesty. In all honesty, in pool three, it's a C tier card for me. Maybe C plus. There are plenty of players trying to make it work. I don't think much of it because I, I think it lowers the stakes. I don't like cards that lower the stakes. Leech, Sandman, Spider-Man. Spider-Man's a very good card for winning. Not a good card for getting four or eight cube wins. And so there's probably going to be like a... We just got battle mode, and there's probably going to be a tournament meta that is different than the rank ladder meta, and the tournament meta will be based more around just getting wins and not getting high cube wins, depending on what format the tournaments take. And if there is a meta in which winning is more important than winning eight cubes, Sandman, Leech, Spider-Man will be elevated in my mind, because that's what they're good at. They're good at winning games. They're just not good at winning games for a lot of cubes. So that's why I have Sandman where he is. Next up we have Scorpion. Scorpion is an S tier card. He is very similar to Iceman. This version on the right is incorrect. He is not a 3-3, he is a 2-2. You, what, everything I said about Iceman applies to Scorpion. You drop him in almost any deck and he's gonna be good. He afflicts cards in your opponent's hand with minus one power. So if he hits four cards, that makes him a 2-6 equivalent to Angela at her best, and you don't have to do anything to make him good. You don't have to combo him with anything. You just play him. So you're going to see the Iceman Scorpion opener so many times that you're never going to want to see it again. You can throw Iceman and Scorpion in almost any deck and they will make them better. This is an exceptional card, the best of the two drops currently in the game the most plug-and-play of the two drops currently in the game. S-tier card, and I would rank Iceman Scorpion as the top two of the S-tier cards in Pool 2. Because of the raw power they provide with no effort on the part of the player. One cost four power for Iceman, at least in my view. Two cost six power for Scorpion when played on turn two. Maybe two cost five, depending on the deck. But even five power for two costs. Now, if not all those cards get played from your opponent's hand, then it's worse than that. If you're, because it, it only, it's theoretical until the, those cards are actually played. If he hits Brood, though, Brood is a very popular card in pool three. That's three power all on its own. So this is a, an exceptional card that probably needs a nerf along with Iceman because of how prevalent they are and how they crowd out all other options in deck building. Next up we have Shane Chi, the Cube Thief. Four cost three power on reveal. Destroy all enemy cards at this location that have nine or more power. Shang-Chi is an S-tier card equivalent to Killmonger. I would throw him in every single Pool 2 deck for sure. He will get you probably more 8-cube wins than any other card in Pool 2. 
he in a lot of ways defines the meta because any deck that runs big cards has to think about what if Shang-Chi and sometimes play cards just to counter Shang-Chi like Armor or Cosmo that you would not otherwise play. And in Pool 2 he's dominant, in Pool 3 he's dominant. He's an amazing card that I would put in nearly every Pool 2 deck along with Killmonger, Scorpion, and Iceman. So you can start to see that, assuming these rankings are accurate, the Pool 2 deck, the best Pool 2 deck, kind of builds itself. It's going to be a Iceman, Scorpion, Shang-Chi, Agent 13 type of dino deck. I threw Shang-Chi in my ongoing deck that I used to climb to Infinite in Pool 2, and he was a very important part of that deck in getting 8 cube wins. Next up we have Storm. 3 cost, 2 power on reveal. Flood this location. Next turn is the last turn cards can be played here. Very good in combination with Jessica Jones. There are other combinations that work well with Storm as well. In Pool 2, it's a B or a C tier card. It's good, but it's not really a part of either of the top 2 or 3 decks. In Pool 3, it comes into its own more in lane control decks. It's a solid A tier card. Very good. Very common to see it. Gets played in Silver Surfer decks. Gets played in lane control decks. Very, very good card that you're going to see often. But in Pool 2, it's it doesn't really have a place in the top decks because it requires other cards to work with it that aren't available yet in Pool 2. Next up we have Sunspot. This is an S tier card that sees play very very commonly in Pool 3 in a wide variety of decks. 1 cost, 1 power at the end of each turn, gain plus 1 power for each unspent energy, so he smooths out the energy curve. He is vulnerable to Killmonger and he gets Killmongered a lot. Nonetheless, he sees a ton of play in a wide variety of decks, often as the sole 1 drop. In Pool 2, it's most common to see him in the Sunspot Infinite deck, which is not a good deck, in my opinion. It's a deck that seems good, but that is too obvious. And I have heard of players getting to Infinite with the Sunspot Infinite deck, but I don't think it's good. I don't think it's good because I think it's too obvious. Because typically, when someone has Sunspot on the board, or just when they skip turn 5, you almost always know that Infinite is coming in if they you can't beat it then you just run away. If you're playing against very inexperienced players the Sunspot Infinite deck can be very good. And sometimes you do play against very inexperienced players in Pool 2, but I found the Sunspot Infinite deck lacking and I would rank it probably fourth behind Dino, maybe even fifth, behind Dino, behind Zoo behind ongoing, behind on reveal. But in pool 3 and in some pool 2 decks you're going to see sunspot everywhere and it's a very good card for smoothing out energy curves and it gives you options in some hard to reach lo locations like kiln where you play the card you can't play cards there after turn 4 but you've still got sunspot there and so you can still grow your power at the lane even though you can't play any more cards there. So definitely an S tier card is Sunspot. Next up we have Swarm. Two cost three power. When this card is when this is discarded from your hand, add two copies that cost zero to your hand. It's a very good card in the discard deck. This card deck is probably a in pool three, it's probably a tier three deck. Definitely capable of getting to infinite, and Swarm is a solid A tier card in that deck. Outside of the discard deck, Swarm is garbage and should never be played. A D or an F tier card outside of the discard deck. Inside of the discard deck in Pool 2, it's a C tier card because the discard deck in Pool 2 is not that good. If you manage to climb to infinite with the discard deck in pool 2, well you have my respect because I would consider that quite a challenge. And so I would not rate Swarm very highly in pool 2. But once you get into 
pool three, you could rank these discard cards as A tier, maybe B tier, B plus, A minus type cards. Next up we have the collector. Two cost, one power when a card enters your hand from anywhere except your deck plus one power. In pool two, this is a better card than it is in pool three. I'd rank it as a solid B plus, A minus card in pool two. Gets played a lot in the dino deck and it's pretty good in that deck. In pool three, better options become available and the collector drops to like a C tier card for me. But in pool two, when you're playing like Agent 13, Cable, White Queen, each of those cards will add one power to your hand. When you play Moon Girl, it'll add three or so power to the collector. As long as you can get him to two, four consistently, he's quite good. Just in pool three, better options become available to fill this card slot. But in pool two, he's pretty good, and you can see play in the dino deck. I don't think I did play him in my dino deck that I used to go from rank uh, 95 to 100 or so. But I consider him a, a B, B tier card, maybe B plus, maybe B minus, depending on how much you build your deck around him. But he does fall off in pool three. Next up we have the Infinite, a solid A tier card that sees play in a number of different decks in Pool 3, but not usually playing him after skipping a turn. Usually when he sees play in a Pool 3 deck, it's he's getting discarded and brought back with Hela or Ghost Rider, or he's getting cheated out with Jubilee. Very, very rare to see skip a turn and then play Infinite, though you do see it sometimes. The Pool 2 deck that runs Infinite and Sunspot I don't think is very good, and I would rate it lower than 4 or maybe even 5 decks. But in Pool 3, he sees a lot of play in combo decks, and he's very good in those decks. Next up we have Vision. Vision's a very interesting card. Probably the most interesting card for me of the Pool 2 cards. I have him as an A tier card. I played him in my Dino deck that I played from 95 to 100 when I was going up to Infinite in Pool 2. I like this card. It's versatile. Helps you put power at hard to reach locations. It provides some degree of unpredictability. This is a good card. Now, 7 power for 5 cost is lacking. So you have to make up for it with tricky plays. But that's not too difficult in pool 2. Pool 2 cards have limited capacity for outplays. And so a card like Vision, which provides you with the ability to outplay, you can, I think, elevate his value in pool 2. In pool three, he falls off a little bit because better options for projecting power into lanes becomes available, such as Dr. Doom, even something like Hela or other cards that increase power in multiple lanes, something like Cerebro, Patriot. There's a wide variety of cards that become available in pool three. But in pool two with limited options, Vision's quite good. I drop him to probably a B minus C plus card in pool three, but in pool two he's a solid A. And I included him in my dino deck and I considered him important in that deck. Very good card in pool two. Falls off in pool three. Next up we have Vulture, a vital card in the movement deck. Maybe the best card in the movement deck, and as the movement deck is quite good in Pool 2, I have him as a B plus, A minus card. Falls off a lot in Pool 3 down to C minus, D plus card because the movement deck is not that good in Pool 3, though you will find people who swear by it and who love it, and even players who have managed to play it up to infinite. But I don't consider the deck to be very strong, very inherently strong. And in Pool 3, in Pool 2 it's quite good and a lot of fun to play. And that's why Vulture gets 
a B plus A minus rating in pool two, but he does fall off as the movement deck falls off as the collection expands. Last up for our pool two cards, we have Warpath, a solid A tier card, a really, really good card in the ongoing deck. In fact, he may even be the centerpiece of the ongoing deck. I played the ongoing deck from rank, I don't know, 50 or 60 all the way up to 95 or so when I was doing my pool two climb. And uh, Warpath was so important to that deck that I would say you can't really play it without him. Four cost, five power, ongoing. If any of your locations are empty, plus four power. So the deck with Warpath is designed to stack up on two locations and then use Claw or Mr. Fantastic to project power to the third location. There are a variety of cards and locations that disrupt Warpath. He falls off in pool three because he can be dragged around by Arrow or Magneto. The locations like Central Park ruin Warpath because they add a squirrel to each location so none of your locations will be empty. But in Pool 2 he's a, he's a solid A tier card. Now my overall rankings for the Pool 2 decks, I have Dino as the number one. I'll make a tier here for this. So here at the bottom are my overall rankings for the Pool 2 decks. I have the Dino deck as number one, the Spectrum Ongoing deck as number two, Kazar Zoo as number three, the Movement Heimdall deck I have number four, On Reveal with Odin number five, and then Infinite, Discard, and Destruction at the end. The decks which I would consider capable of getting to Infinite in a timely manner are these top four decks and I would not recommend any others, especially the top three decks I would recommend. The number four movement with Heimdall requires a lot of time investment to learn and a lot of thinking. May not be everyone's cup of tea if you're trying to relax or if you're grinding for a hundred hours and you don't want to do that much thinking all the time. That would be perfectly understandable. The top three decks especially are the ones I would recommend for grinding up to infinite in pool two, particularly the Dino deck and the Spectrum ongoing deck with Zoo closely following behind. The other decks, Odin, On Reveal, Infinite, Discard, Destruction, if you manage to get to infinite with one of those, you have my respect because that is a challenge in my view movement deck as well, though I know of players who have done that. The top three decks are the ones to focus on to get to infinite, the ones to focus your time and energy on. So next up we'll do a pool three review and buying guide, giving my recommendations on which cards to spend those tokens on in pool three if you have a mind to spend your tokens on pool three cards and not save up for pool 4 or pool 5 cards. So we'll go over each of the pool 3 cards in the game, talk about the different decks, and I'll give my recommendations on which cards to buy first to help you get to infinite in pool 3 as soon as possible. So, thank you for watching.